Now that we understand the graph editor a little better, let's practice it using a classic example of the bouncing ball. You should have already downloaded the ballrig.zip file from D2L. If you haven't, do that now. And we're going to go ahead and extract that file here. So I'll go right click, and this time I'm going to use 7-zip and click Extract to Ball Rig. So now you'll see that I have the Ball Rig folder. And inside of the Ball Rig folder is a more abridged version of all of the project folders um, that we saw in our bridge folder earlier. You'll see that under Scenes, there's my Ball Rig.mb file, but we should not double click on that. We're going to open it the correct way. So again, we go to Maya and I go to File, Set Project, and I'm going to go to my desktop and choose Ball Rig and hit Set. Now I can go to File and open the scene, and there's my Ball Rig. Now, you probably noticed the word Rig in this file. In previous classes, we've talked about the word Rig and what we mean by that. However, let's explore this rig a little more before we get into animating this. If I go to Maya Classic, you'll see that we have a ball, but if I try to click it, I can't select it. I also can't select the floor. It's because all of that is inside of layers, and those layers have been locked. However, the thing I can select is this curve along the bottom of the ball. Now if I select that curve, you'll see that I have the standard translates, rotates, and scale options, but you may notice something different is that my translate pivot point is at the bottom of my ball, at the point where it would contact the floor. The reason for that is because I want to be able to animate angles at the point at which my ball contacts the floor. Built into this rig is a squash and stretch feature. If I adjust the squash and stretch, you'll see that I can, with just this one number, get both stretch and squash. The reason, again, that my pivot point is here is that now I can angle how the ball contacts the floor. However, if the ball were to roll like this, that doesn't look very realistic. We have additional channels, RX, RY, and RZ, that will allow us to get some roll even when the ball is in this stretched form. So, when we use the word rig, again, what we are saying is a setup that allows us to animate the object in the most efficient way possible. So. I get a lot of people who ask, why can't I select the ball? And it's because that would not be the most efficient way to animate this. So consider how these settings are set up. That's what we're going to use to animate this bouncing ball. So let's go ahead and go back to the animation workspace. I'm also going to animate from a specific camera. You see that currently I'm looking through my perspective camera. And instead, I want to be looking through this camera, which is camera one. Actually, I want to be able to look through both of them. So what I'm going to do is go to panels, layouts, and do two panes side by side. Then I can change this to my camera one. Now, you may also be getting this in Maya, which is a version of the ball that is gray instead of with the red and white stripes. Again, remember shortcut keys from previous classes. Four is wireframe, five is shaded, and six is textured. Now this is the camera that I am going to eventually render. So I wanna make sure I'm seeing what will come out in the render. I'll turn on this option so I can see my render shape, and I'll try to keep most of my animation within this range. Once I get my camera set up in a place where I'm happy with it, I can lock that camera by clicking this little camera lock button right here. Now I can't accidentally move my camera. So what this means is 
on this side of my screen, I'll be able to see what will come out in the render. And over here, I can tumble around freely in order to manipulate the ball.